So a lot of you asked about these glasses you can poke and I didn't think that many people would care but a lot of you did ask for a tutorial so I'm gonna try my best to explain how I have everything set up and why things are the way they are. Now these work with fist bones, dynamic bones, string bones, all of those but these aren't perfect and there are some limitations so more on that later. But here is the setup I currently have for these glasses and I'm gonna explain each bone as we go starting with the main one here. Now this is kind of like the root for everything, so this controls how the glasses move up and down. Now the important part here is how you have the head of the bone positioned, because if it's too far down, the glasses are gonna flip inside your face. If you have it too far up, then the glasses are gonna flip off your face. So here the important thing is just to find that sweet spot where the arc moves the glasses to, you know, to your forehead. Technically, you don't need this bone, but I do recommend having a root bone for everything though. So, in case you don't want the up and down movement, then you can just have a tinier one. <laughs> Next up, we have the bones you're gonna be poking at. Now, the scale and position of these matter. Because you can imagine the collision radius around these. So, if you have them too far forward, because if you want the radius to cover the whole lens, then you're gonna have a quite a big gap here and a buffer. But if you then have the radius small enough so it doesn't like go too far forward, then you're gonna have a dead zone like on the top and bottom of the lens. So you can kind of see what the radius would look like if you switch to here in the viewport display and display it as envelope. So you can kind of see what the radius would be by pressing Alt S and scaling a bone or scaling the whole bone and stuff. The reason why I have the bones angled here is because in Unity, bones don't have tails. So it's just gonna be the head of the bone. So it's gonna be from here to the head of these bones to the head of these next unconstrained bones. So if you have all of these disconnected, just be aware where the head of your bone is. So I'm gonna have the radius smaller where the bridge of the glasses is. So that's why, because it's gonna be smaller if it's this far out you're not gonna be able to touch it but if i have it here and looking at the envelope i'm gonna have it smaller there so you can still poke it but it's like you know there's a bit more like fidelity to it it's not perfect with the envelopes but you can kind of get an idea what it would look like now moving on to the aim constraint bones that are pointing at each other they're parented to your pohi bones from before <laughs> Um, these are the bones you're gonna have your glasses weight painted to. So if we look at the weight paints here, these both have the weight at 1. Everything else is just at 0. Now the reason why you have it weight painted to the aim constraints is that if they weren't there, the angle that these bones create would smoosh the glasses and morph them, as you can see. But then with the aim constraints there, if we turn them on, the angle of the bones doesn't change relative to each other. But the reason why I said this isn't perfect is that if you go too far with it, they're gonna... <laughs> they can morph if you go too far. But you can just limit how much the bones can move, so this should never happen. Now, the next thing you might be thinking of is why have these extra aim constraint bones here? Why not just have these be the aim constraints? pointing at each other. That is because in Unity you can't have two components controlling the same bone. So for example you can't have the aim constraint and the collision moving the bone. The only exception being in fist bones there is the option to click is animated which allows an animator component or whatever aim constraint to control the bone in addition the fist bone but that is quite heavy like it says on the component and it's kind of not necessary here because i would also say that the up and down movement it helps instead of like the morphing from before so moving on to unity i'm gonna show how i have this set up with fist bones but it works the same with dynamic bones and spring bones as well so i have the component on the root of the glasses from before that move everything up and down and you're gonna add the aim constraints to the bones that pointed to each other so I'm gonna just select both, add component, aim, constraint. I'm gonna hit plus, then I'm gonna select 
the left one, make it point at the right one, activate. Select the right one, make it point at the left one, and activate. There you go. Now looking at the components, I have excluded the in-constraint bones because they're kind of unnecessary and just don't do anything. So to exclude them, just exclude the ends. And then the forces, you can just have the values however you want them, how you want the glasses moving and just experiment, you know. With face bones, you do though have the limit type, I set it to hinge, that prevents the glasses from moving side to side. They can only move on the one axis. So here they don't move side to side, they can only bounce up and down. So as a quick side note, the way I have the hinge here is that I've added pitch so that it doesn't let the glasses push down further than the nose, but then you can freely like lift them up. And the same goes for the lenses. You can't push them much further down than this, but then you can like push them up quite a lot. So the issue you might run into is that if you add pitch, you might have this bone moving up, but then these might be pushing down. In that case, the X axis is wrong on these bones. So you can change it by going here in the viewport display, then displaying axes. You can see the X axis pointing here and here. If you press Control R, you can twist the X axis around. You can just type 180. So now you have the X axis flipped. So then in Unity, if you move the pitch up and down, it might be more favorable. So next up we have the collision radius here. You can just scale it so it covers the glasses in total. And then edit the curve. Because with this curve now, you can shrink the beginning of it and then fine tweak the ends. So now you have that middle point that is kind of like singed a little bit. And now I have this sphere set up as a collider here just to test it out. but. There you go. And now quickly just to show how I have this set up with dynamic bones for this VC phase avatar. is pretty much the same except there's no hinge limitation option. So I've just upped the stiffness so the root bone is pretty much not moving at all. But then the end bones here, which are the end constraints like from before, can move freely so they can like bounce up and down. And then just sit setting up the collision how you would normally. Now the thing to know here is that you can't have aim constraints or location rotation, whatever constraints on VRM models. The file format doesn't support it. But the way I do still have them here is that for a VC phase, the order of operation you have is that you have your FBX, export it to VRM, then set up your constraints, and then you export to VC phase. But yeah, then you have your glasses that you can... <laughs> wait, wait, that's not what glasses are supposed to do. I, I need to up the, <laughs> I need to up the limits on this. Actually, but yeah, <laughs> baby's first tutorial will be gentle. <laughs> bye bye. Uh. Excuse me. Whoa.